Hey, so guys, my name is Chen. We're back with the code review of the game with the flying dog. Just another day at the office. Uh, the previous episode will be linked up there because this is a continuation of that last episode. Still reviewing the same code. Here we are. So what did we end on last time? It was the textures. Yeah, so here we were in the game class inside game in it. That's what was loading all these textures and that's where we kind of stopped last time. So getting back to this file, let's keep looking at what happened. So, so this is the, like the bulk of the initialization code. The update function is kind of part of our game loop. So this is what kind of gets executed every single frame. Now, the first thing I can notice you're doing here is you're passing in frame start, which is a 32-bit un unsigned integer, and you're passing it by const reference, which is not something you want to do. And in fact, I can see that in a few different places. Now, this, like at the end of the day, is not a huge deal, but I would drop this like habit immediately. If you have a type that is trivially copyable and is kind of small enough, then you should always pass that type by value. What I mean is on a 64-bit architecture here, so we're building this in x64 and this CPU is a 64-bit CPU, like pretty much all CPUs are these days. What's actually happening is by kind of passing this as a const reference, what really has to happen is this kind of argument gets converted into a pointer. Right, because that's kind of what a reference is at the end of the day. It's like kind of syntactic sugar around really what is a memory address, a pointer. So you're not kind of passing the uint itself, the value of the integer, you're passing its location in memory so that you can then kind of reference it and it's referencing that same exact kind of variable. Now, how big are pointers on a 64-bit architecture? 64 bits. So this becomes eight bytes that you're actually passing here. How big is a uint 32? It's four bytes. So basically, instead of just copying the value of this into this function, which is less memory, you're kind of up converting it into a pointer and then having to kind of, I guess, deal with it as if it was like a reference and a pointer rather than just a simple value of memory that can easily be loaded into a CPU register. Now, I don't want to get too deep into here. I will say that this is, this is actually a really good topic for me to probably make a big video about. I'm going to write that down. But all I'm saying is that as a rule, if you have something that is, well, especially less than eight bytes of memory, but possibly even less than 16 or 32 bytes of memory, this is really where if it really matters to you, it's like a very hot path. You want to probably do some profiling on your device, whatever it is that you're going to be executing the code on to just see how it works as well as what the compiler decides to do with these things. Again, this is endlessly complex and I don't want to get too into it. But if you have something that is small enough, you should just pass it by value, which would look like this. Because obviously when you pass something by const reference, there's a special type of reference that obviously you're not really supposed to modify, even though you can actually cast the const away and do whatever you want with it. Because you have the reference, you have the block of memory, you can actually edit it, you can mutate it, that's kind of on you, even though you're kind of saying you won't by putting const here. But my point is, because the const is here, it kind of like... The meaning that it assigns to this is that I'm just, I just need to read this value. I don't need to actually modify it. Therefore, just copy it. Now, this doesn't just include primitive types like a UN32, which speaking of which, I wouldn't use this, this kind of weird alias for it, which is, I guess, in SDL. I actually didn't even know this was a thing. I would definitely just use the built-in kind of C++ type, which is uint32 underscore t. So use that instead of the SDL type. That for one will make your code style, I guess, compatible with anything that is written in C++. And you can see they're exactly the same. Like if I go to the definition of this, it is in fact that, which is, yeah, I mean, to be expected. And that is going to be like a built-in compiler type for MSVC, but really it's just going to be uh, an unsigned int. Just got dark in here. One other thing I was going to say is, yeah, so it's not just about primitive types. Like if you had a struct here that was like, you know, some custom type, obviously, and then it like internally maybe had like, I don't know, two UN32Ts, which again is like 64 bits technically, and you pass that as well, I probably wouldn't choose to pass that custom type by kind of const reference like that. I would instead get rid of it, get rid of like the const reference and just pass it by value because this custom type is just two UN32Ts, which again, fundamentally in memory is the same thing as if you just passed a single UN64T like that. It's exactly the same. Now, what I said earlier about trivially copyable is also kind of, I guess, important to note. Um, so what I mean by that is when a type isn't trivially copyable, which I feel like is that, that's a real term, right? I didn't just make that up. But basically we have something called a copy constructor, which is basically 
something that every class or struct kind of has implicitly, but then you can also override it if you need custom behavior. So a good example of that might be, maybe we have like some kind of data buffer here, right? And every time we kind of copy this custom type, we can't just shallow copy the pointer because what that would do is basically if we make a copy of this, right, we have two of these custom types pointing to exactly the same kind of buffer in memory. And that's not great because it means that like, I don't know, do they own that buffer? Because if one of them dies, then it's going to delete that, which is going to suck for our second custom type because now it's got no buffer. So what we usually want to do is when we make a copy of it, we want to say, okay, no, you don't do this. You actually get your own copy of that buffer, which also, um, probably drawing this right where the face cam is, um, going to do vertical text. <laughs> so what that means, among other things, is that when we actually delete this, this doesn't die, but also it means that they are two independent copies. If we modify it, it also doesn't modify the other one, right? We don't want to kind of share a buffer, almost as if it was static. So what we tend to do is instead of just kind of letting this be a shallow copy that ends up copying the pointer itself, meaning the memory address, and now we have two custom types pointing to a single memory address. Instead, we write some code here to basically be like, all right, well, whatever the size of the other buffer is, let's create our new buffer, right? So new uint32t and maybe our buffer size is like 64 bytes or 64 times four bytes actually, so 256 bytes. And then what do we do? We do like a mem copy basically from other buffer into our one and that would be, you know, size of uint32t UNT times like 64, which is our buffer size. So that's kind of the full picture. This kind of functionality and this kind of struct here now is not trivially copyable or at least it's not kind of, because it's not straightforward in a way. Right, copying it is not as simple as just basically taking like the memory block that represents that struct and copying it. Now we actually have to run a function that's going to allocate another block of memory and then copy everything into it, which obviously will slow down our program. That's extra work that it needs to do. So now, even though custom type is how big? 64 bits, right? Like eight bytes is the size of this type. And if we have an instance of it, that variable is eight bytes. It's just a pointer. However, it has some extra kind of layers to it, which means that if I now take that and I pass it by value into this function, then every time I pass it into this function, it has to make a copy of it, which means it has to run this function and heap allocate and copy a bunch of memory. So this would be a good candidate for us to be like, you know what, const reference, that's not something that I want to copy. And that kind of is hopefully a good uh, example and a good explanation of where I would kind of pass things by value, meaning copy them like this, or when I would actually pass them by const reference. So if we go to the thing that's calling this function, because of course you have to get rid of the const reference here. And again, I would rewrite this as just a uint32t like that. Nothing else changes. They're exactly the same type as you saw before from looking up the definition. But then if we go to whatever calls update, which is game update over here, this also doesn't change because frame start here is just like a UN32 and we're just passing it in here. That's the other interesting thing about const references. Const references are special in the sense that they can take in an L value or an R value. If you have no idea what L values or R values or move semantics are, I have a few C++ videos about them, which I will also link up there and in the description of this video as well. But basically what that means is if game update takes in a const reference, let's kind of make it take in a const reference again, it can take in either an L value, which is an actual real variable that we have here, like frame start, or we can pass in an R value. So like directly, like a literal value, you know, like two, for example, and that will work fine. That's kind of a special feature of the const reference. If this was just a normal reference like this without the const, this would actually give us an error because it has to be an L value since we might, you know, modify it in the update function. And what do you, you can't modify to? It doesn't really exist. It's like a temporary value. Now, the reason I'm explaining this is because it means that if you want to switch from a const reference to a by value situation like this, it's dead simple. You just do what I just did there. You just remove it because whoever uses this function, it accepts either an R value or an L value. So there's no difference kind of in your code. Whereas if you just had a reference, for example, then that means that this can only take in L values, has to take in like real variables, can't take in temporaries. And by getting rid of that, converting it to be like something else or whatever, you're kind of now accepting temporary values. Anyway, my point is it actually kind of changes the semantics of your code in a way. Like you can kind of do different things. But with a const reference, my point is just that whatever a const reference accepts, so does a normal kind of by value copy. So all you have to do is change the signature and that's it. What I think I might do 
actually, I have, I just have an idea that I just came up with on the spot. Let me know if this is something you're interested in. Instead of making like a 40 minute to one hour code review, like I've been doing with like all these different topics in it, what might make more sense is to divide these code reviews into lots of little videos that are regularly released, like a few times a week maybe, that are like specifically addressing certain things. So for example, in this one, we talked about whether to pass things by value or by reference and kind of how I go about determining that. I have a feeling that would probably be more useful to people, or at least you'd be able to select kind of the topics you're interested in rather than just making a code review called 2D Flying Dog Game and then take the risk and click on it maybe. So yeah, I might try that out for this specific code review just because there's lots of little things that I could talk like 10 to 20 minutes about. And then what I usually end up doing is not talking about everything I want to talk about because then the code review would be hours long and I feel like I have to either put it into one or split it up into like two, three videos instead of maybe just by topic. So I'm going to try that. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button below, leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.